Well, good morning, day three. Let's uh, see what kind of trouble we can get into, shall we? There's a lot that we need to do. Uh, oh, look at all the bottles in here. We should take all of this. And we'll see if she's home because uh, we have to talk to her about... Where is it? Uh, about the Hardy's story. So we'll see. We also need to talk to the scab leader. We need to cross the, um, the water lock now and go to that fishing village area. No big deal. Just a few hundred things to do. Okay. So this piece of replaced glass we recently found out about, um, it's clear that it's new and been replaced. So there's some damage here during... We assume that... I, I'm assuming now that the guys died up here. Um, this could lead us to like a jealousy situation with Titus. Oh, she is here. Good. It's always good to see you. Is that right? Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and for what's to come. Hey, uh, listen. The Hardy boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her mug on the table. You don't look very surprised. You were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first between you two, then move on to the questions. Is it? Something is off here. Shush. I can't hear what she's saying. Oh, why did you waste my time then if, I, if you knew I would find out? Because of the Hardies. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me out of the shit I'd gotten into. Is she implying the Hardy boys of the law? Oh, honestly, that's not a good enough reason. And you're right, there's more. You answered to the coalition government and by extension the moral intern. She reaches for a new cigarette. We feel glancing over her shoulder to the sea as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay on the horizon. Gray and pale violet in the morning light. What lies beyond it? The pale, the Mundia Sola, the Occident, and then Oranje, the Old World. Uh, is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? She nods. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. What's going on? What did you do? Just business, but bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in the records, officer, they'll find me, and they will. What happens if they find you? Uh, they will kill me, officer. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. There's a wince and a little smile. Well, then I'm fucked for nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked people after her? Moral intern people? This isn't orangey's lit. <laughs> uh, well, okay. What, what did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Revachal, or even in Oranje. What was it? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company, the kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers, two decades worth of accounting. Uh, who did you do this to, and on whose behalf? The job was Lustuin County Savings Bank, and they sound small, but they're part of some Luscap conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know, but they're after me too, along with Luscap and their friends in the MI, she breathes heavily. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Let's cap these people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Earberg, and the popular Papa Lolo line of dairy products. Hmm. Oh, you're right. This is bad. You've destroyed what people have built. I am. I am a destroyer. People lost their jobs, good people, not just C-suite assholes. And the way I got into accounting, she shakes her head at the thought, a lot of people got hurt, but that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. Well, listen here. What happened here the night he died? We were there. The points to the window. Okay, here we go. The silhouette of the bed is visible. Together. In bed, I mean. 
<laughs> Tell me exactly what happened. No details, bed. Okay, she takes a deep breath. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. She breathes out a moment of silence. His eyes were looking through me as if his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. So they were banging and he was shot through the glass, which leads me to believe it might have been the other mercenary has that vantage point. Maybe. Oh, well, then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor there. She points through the window. He only had his boots on. <laughs> we're wearing those boots. <laughs> I bit the pillow not to scream and then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. He just stands there, her arms at her sides. Then she continues. I've waited for the second shot to come for me. I thought there would be one, but it never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right to her fingernails. Uh, your, your cigarette, miss. Oh, she looks at it and quickly tosses it to the side. Uh, I'm sorry that this happened to you. So am I. What time was this? 11.30, 12.15? I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. Were you inebriated? Uh, not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait, Titus says she was gurning her jaw off. Much more than usual. Yeah, he was saying she was like super out of it. Tata said you look pretty high. Oh, yeah. I, I did one of his lines just to clear my head. So she's like, she was fucked. All right. Good thinking. Clear your head. You should clear your head. Get into his mindset. Uh, did you hear or see the shooter at any point? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Okay, well, what happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. She looks down. We still haven't met this Sylvie. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I don't know if... Do we know a Ruby? I sat down and they all welcomed me. I... Maybe he's one of the Hardy boys. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Yeah, who's Ruby? Ruby, you know, the leader. Leader of what? The Hardy boys? She says if it were self-evidence. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like, things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Oh, okay, so Ruby's the woman that's involved. This Ruby in her phrasing is entrusted with great power. She trusts her, so do so do the others. Oh, what would you say she is? Uh, the eighth hottie boy? Why not? Does she also party with Ruby? And did you party with Ruby too? No. <laughs> she smiles nervously, the beads of her teeth shine. Still, there's something there. She won't tell you now. Okay, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said, let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation, and I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take, she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know? Take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. They tampered with the body to disguise the cause of death. Oh, ma'am, you were tampering with the body. Yes, Ruby said the blood in him would look like a hanging. <laughs> Smart. Well, then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys, and I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on, his armor too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something, so I did. Now this Ruby, uh, where is she now? Make Titus give it up. I, I don't know. I haven't seen her since. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble? To hide something someone else did. Look into this later. Yeah, we will. When it happened, uh, did you hear a gunshot? 
when he was shot. I, th I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. Yeah. Hey, uh, did you kill Lely? What? Why would I put myself through this insanity, get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. The wind picks up. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. All kinds of crazy things happen when drugs are involved. Sweet, sweet drugs. Could have been a desire murder. Maybe an act of jealousy? I'm leaning towards jealousy, but... It, it could either have been... Titus is a kind of an obvious one. Maybe one of the other mercenaries for whatever reason. But, who knows. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun somewhere laying around close to her hand. Huh. Well, uh, drugs were an integral part of your relationships. Perhaps they contributed to its end. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know what I mean. Do drugs make you aggressive? No, people don't take drugs to kill each other. They take them to feel okay with each other. I thought you Revishal people would be more enlightened on this. I'm sorry, officer. I'm under some stress here. Look, well, he must have had a weapon nearby. Maybe you used it. No, I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. All right. Well, I'd like to answer some other questions, if you don't mind. Like what? Well, could the people after you have killed him, you think? That's the first thing that went through my head. Because she's wanted by, like, these other companies that she screwed over. And maybe they're, they killed him. Maybe even trying to shoot her. And they hit him instead. That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. You know, and I thought they'd found me. They'd kill him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette. So they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. Yeah, but <laughs> maybe it did. I just don't know. I don't know anything. If there's one thing I know, it's that you'll get nothing from Luke's, Luke's cap. They don't fuck things up like this up. Well, why'd you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast, which is an indicator of the truth. Idiot? She's nothing of the sort. Well, so you'd have me believe, but you're not an idiot. You have to understand, the people around here, no one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, thud, shakes her head. So I called you. I hope it was with, I hope with all my heart, it's not the last thing I do in Ravishal. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. All right, well, when was the window changed? Last week, Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it, because that lines up. You should have another look at the window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. Sick. Uh, in her bedroom inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. I think we're done here for now. Ooh. She nods slightly. She doesn't even smoke. She just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Drama, baby. Nice. Whew. What, dear God? You've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoking mirrors and will-o'-wisps. Possible. It was legendary. She probably didn't give you a real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Hmm. Huh. Hey, uh, what if I told you you were under arrest, miss? What? Nothing's happening. Uh, you know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. I did. She takes a step forward. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The, the numbers are all over town. 8100-2 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. Took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergency's desk number. Anyone could know that's her by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. Well, anybody could call, could know that number, and that someone coughed. It means nothing. I can give you the time, too. It was late after midnight, 1220. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you, but I am now. 
Well, another thing, your real name isn't Klaasja Manju. You wouldn't give me a real name if you were on the run. Okay, her voice cracks suddenly, like there's a garret around her neck. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. Uh, I knew it. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to common sewer. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I lied before, like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. She looks at her hands, her fingernails are chipped white. I'm so tired of it. And what was the passport bullshit too? That passport you keep hidden? No, it's submerged in a plastic buoy on the coast in the reeds. It just doesn't say Klaustra Mandu. It says Anuk Meisersmit. Yeah, it's fake too. Yeah. A fake passport and visa given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name to hurt me. Well, why? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't like that. They don't take that lightly. She rushes to explain. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. Well, where is this boy? Uh, west of the boardwalk in the reeds on the coast there. She points towards a clump of ruins on the western horizon. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. Uh, west of the boardwalks in the reeds. I need to check this buoy out. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past a broken sewage pipe right near the waterline. All right, well, what is your real name? It's Katarzyn Alessij. The smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. It's a Grad name. Zimsker Yugo Grad in origin, not Occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, taiga, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. It's called, it also makes Klaschja almost an alacronym. For Katharina Alessige. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, finally we meet Katharina Alessige. She nods, her round eyes meet yours. They seem moist from the wind on the roof. All right, enough. Let's change the subject. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath as if it's in the presence of some tiger. You are, this is not the end of this. Hmm. Uh, let's check out the window. There's a buoy west of the boardwalk on the coast, somewhere in the reeds. So this has to be out by the fishing village. Make Titus give up Ruby's location. He's the organizer of the hanging. She's also missing, but the Hardy Boys will be tight-lipped about her location. You need to get them to open up. You've fully explored the whirling, analyzed the site of the murder, truly and thoroughly interrogated Klaasja. This might make the convincing them easier. Well, I think so. We're going to check this again. Here. You've heard what happened. Come on now. Nice. The golden light melts away into the blue, glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon-lit shapes, a man and a woman on the bed. Yeah, okay. Uh, A, B. Okay. A two-hearted spider. <laughs> uh, what position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling. The woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. Okay. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray casts from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Oh, where did it come from? From the roof outside, location A, prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back investigate the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Let's have a look at point A, the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions. On, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime. Most likely of the origin points. Well, shouldn't there be like gun residue outside? There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. So I'm what, like 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? 
72%. Uh, With a weapon that's good for medium range, like a rifle or sports pistol, this is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. That would explain why it took them only one shot. Okay. Or they were a mercenary with good aim. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium, a well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness, too busy with their own bodies. So could the shot have come from inside the room? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire preposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Right. Are there any arguments against A prime, the roof? None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28% yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin of Martinez? Yes, extrapolate it. So here's A, and these are the spots it could have come from. According to your map of the district, the shot could have come from a wide angle of location, starting with the northern edges of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. Wow. Okay. Holy frick. B for boardwalk, B for land's end, and B for the islet, detective. <laughs> oh, B, I'll oh, say B with one, B2, B3. Got it. Uh, there may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. All right, let's look at B, the, the, the boardwalk there. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance, skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. Right, like the other Merc that apparently was watching over us from a distance, probably from the same spot, maybe? At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take the wind direction into account. Okay, the land's end here. So this is like the fishing village area, and this was like the church on the map. So this is even beyond that. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these prepositions, let's say 3%. Skilled Sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. What about B3, the islet? One kilometer away. Unlikely point of origin, or beyond the dock somewhere, on an islet in the Bay of Martinez, perhaps? There are islets there, badly charted as they may be. The shot would have been a small miracle. 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue saint Tent and 33A. The angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable. Ah, so the shot could have come from somewhere further out than the roof. It is possible that it came from B prime, the boardwalk, B double prime, lands end, or B triple prime. If anything, it's most likely A, B prime, secondly, most likely. These would be very rare. You can't know for sure until you investigate these locations. Lieutenant would probably agree in this situation. It's best to be thorough. Blink and leave. Okay. Well, check Land's End, check Boardwalk, check Island. Fully explored the whirling, analyzed the site of the murder, truly and thoroughly interrogated class. Yeah, I, I think I want to say that, yes, we probably have. Now, there are like the secret doors of the whirling, which are still a little bit on my mind. Because uh, it would be nice to be able to say, yeah, I've, I've seen literally everything. But I can't. Can't say that. I'm holding some skill points here. Uh, we don't have anything else that we can think about yet. But, um, you know, we might want to put something into some of these things. Perception's actually getting pretty high up there. Um, bonus two from thoughts. We could consider putting things into, like, physical instrument. For knocking down doors and things. Oh, who are these people? Wait, these are RCM, maybe. They have the little halogen marks. Hey, Kim, what's going on here, dude? Yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, aren't we going to talk about the boots I'm wearing? Okay, let's talk about it. You stole the boots. He looks at the gleaming technological footwear you're sporting. Congratulations, that must have taken an enormous concerted effort. Considerable ingenuity and timing. Now I'm going to report you and you're going to jail. Lie, lie to get out of it. No, no, these are these are not the same boots. I like them so much, I went and bought myself a pair. 
Sure. Anyway, did you want something related to police work? Well, I did find out what the pail is while you were gone. Wonderful. What is this your takeaway? Well, uh... That's a good question. It's, uh... Terrifying. Then I was right to spare you from it, no? Anyway, the pail is no more terrifying than, say, water or death, or that we're stuck behind our eyes for all eternity. Excuse me, large topics are not my forte. You seem stable enough. Keep it that way. Now, was there anything else we should get to it? Hey, uh, I think you should know I can't remember anything. Let's see what he says here. He's having trouble processing and believing even. I really don't remember anything. There was drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There's a sudden harsh edge in his voice, like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. Well, what should I concentrate on? Try work, the case at hand. It can work miracles. All right. Uh, oh. What's wrong with personal affairs? Not a fan. It's just the nature of lieutenancy. The RCM deploys a self-styled structure called the decomptage as a chain of command. Every lieutenant's responsible for two sergeants and eight officers. This means the average lieutenant has to deal with quite a few personal affairs. All right, I'm afraid this is a medical situation. Uh, really? You look fine to me. I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror. I had no idea who I was. The psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. Clearly, he prefers to think you're malingering. You cannot fathom it. Anyone could drink so much as to retroactively erase their entire life. Kim, it's not psychological. Some sort of major brain damage has occurred on an unprecedented scale. Oh, hello. Then you should seek medical attention. You can use the radio in my kinemon to call your stations Lazarus. Is there anything else you wanted? Let's get a rundown of the case. Oh, actually, we didn't do like a case summary with him before bed. So before bed, we should go outside and like get a lay of the land, I guess, right? What do you want to know? Preliminary info, a brief, no, I'll wing it. I just want to clear these out. During that time, the victim, make it cool, we know. Okay. All right. Everything's fine with him. I'm going to pay this dude before we forget, because I will. Here's the 20 bucks. See you later. Uh, all my stations lather Lazarus. Uh, Kim suggests you call the station Lazarus in order to sort out your health issues. Do you feel you can you, you can use his motor carriage to make the call, though you don't feel hopeful? <laughs> True enough. All right, who are these people? Horse-faced woman. The woman is an RCM patrol officer's uniform. Winces as she notices I really you. Prefer not to talk to you right now. Uh, a patrol officer is the lowest ranks in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Hmm. Uh, is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to I me? I don't know. I mean, why would I want to talk to you? Well, uh, I don't know why. I'm just trying to do my best. But you're not trying your best, are L you? Literally the sorriest cop. Calm down. Says to the man, then turns okay, to fine. you. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? Hey, uh, what precinct are you from? What precinct? She just sighs. Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Hey, you're the police, right? Cool. So am I. I don't, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Wait, is he police? Me? No, I'm just a man with sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses inside. Sunglasses and a fucking wig. Is he undercover, maybe? Logic? Okay. Uh, what are you... Uh, what are you, uh, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... No one! I'm just a man with sunglasses, and you are? A uh, police woman. Uh, police woman. Yes, a police woman who just wants to do her job, that's all. All right. Other police are here. I don't know why. Oh, hello, dear. There you are. I don't know why. I'm going to talk to this guy again real quick. Hey, uh, do you know what's behind that door? Looks up at you, then quickly looks away. Nope. We can attempt our window check again. Perception, 58% now. Mystery door scene. You've been here a long time. And we have the dice. So being here a long time, I guess, is what's unlocking this. Nice. 
There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches. A light yellow faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket. Hanging from it, a bronze key? Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it, surely. Uh, someone's heard a key in the bush. Huh? Big guy looks behind him. Uh, well. Hey, uh, can you just let me slide by so I can grab the thing? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm comfortable here. I don't take any slide and it would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. The loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the, the table. Thank you, Theo. Spare key for the workshop. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man, we're just having some fun. Where's the harm in it? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Hey, uh, thank you. Does anybody know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window? I didn't even know it was there. The man looks at the key in your hands. Boys, no idea. Never seen it. All right. Thank you, old man. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. There's a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. Interesting. Uh, well, I wonder what doors it could open. It could open the door in the kitchen. That's what I'm thinking. It looks at the key in your hand. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. It's worth a try. Thank you, Logic. Hell yeah. Okay, come on now. Come on. Could be connected to the bar door upstairs. Let's try it. Key fits the dimple lock. Takes a bit of effort to turn all these years, but then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb haunted by regal spirits from distant ages? No, it smells like engine grease in a cut wood. A workshop. Hello. We are in. Uh, I don't know how dark it is in here, but let's go flashlight. Just to be sure. It's an old pinball machine. Pinball says Franco Nigerian. The theme is horses and swords. Another pinball machine. Pinball is White Diora. The back glass shows a female figure in mourning. All oh, these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged in and played. Let's run our finger across the dust of the White Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life at any moment. The lights illuminating the white robed woman. How about we fire up one of these bad boys and play some ball? You can't fire them up, they're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. He looks away. What a dumb name, Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he'd kick one of the machines about now. Hey, think Kim Kitsuragi. Red check, 72%. Come on. It's strange he doesn't like pinball. Kim here is a sealite. His people are incredibly dexterous and they all love pinball, matter of fact. Hey, uh, didn't you guys like invent pinball? I mean, us guys. You know, like Seol guys, massive pinball people. Seol is an extremely protectionist Isola, inaccessible to the rest of mankind, as it has been for over a thousand years. I have no special knowledge of them, despite my heritage. But even I know that they don't play pinball. They have a rigid class society and a punitive justice system. We should continue with our exploration of this place. It doesn't matter. So you're not at all like pinball aces? Because I could swear I know you are. No. They're not. Let's move on. There's more to this place than pinball machines. Uh, sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. <laughs> what about the other one? You want to play that? No. All right. Let's move on then. A note. NB. The spare key is tied to the bush outside in the quarter window. NB. Who the frick is NB? NB. Nice. Hmm. Small elevators dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The lattice cage is open, inviting you. Let's go. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There's a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last maintenance, 10 July, 88. Oh, God. Uh, it says the last maintenance was in 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. This elevator was last maintained in the future. 
<laughs> no, it was maintained in 88 of the previous century. It's like 70, 80 years. So, uh, it's not a message from the future, then. No, I think the bureaucrats just forgot about this backroom elevator after the revolution. Okay, let's look at the controls. There are large rectangular buttons, Monteur, Descend, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter's a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business long, long time ago. I wonder what this is used for. It seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. Taps on the guttering light bulb. All right, let's close it and go up. This is where we die. Nope. What the? Small windows, tape shot with black plastic. You can't see outside. Okay. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. So, oh, yeah. This wraps around to the locked door outside of uh, her room. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it, no larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. 